thought sees Tarmogoyf players. Reed Duke has been a big proponent of very light splashing and often no splashing. Here he's technically on Obzon this weekend, but it's a very light commitment. Only two copies of Lingering Souls is it for white cards. Yeah, and the big reason that you're seeing this is we kind of talked about how important answering the Ironworks cards are during our pregame show. And we see four copies of Stony Silence hiding out on the board. And if you're splashing white for your sideboard cards anyway, just having this great grindy tool in Lingering Souls is going to get you a lot of free points. Now, Robert Lee is on the play here for game number one. He has taken a mulligan to six. But we'll come out with something like Birds of Paradise. Now, these black-green mid-range decks, so Abzan, Jund, Golgari, how do you generally like them against your company, your creature decks, things like spirits and humans? So Lingering Souls is going to get you a lot of points here just because it gives you something that you can do and it gives you time, which is a big, big deal because eventually the whole point of these green-black decks is they just want to take over with their Tarmogoyf, with their Lilianas, etc. And having those tools that make sure you don't just get got by a couple of flyers that can fly past a Tarmogoyf or a Scavenging Ooze is going to get Duke some serious points. Now Reed, not going to let his opponent untap with that Birds of Paradise, uses Fatal Push on it. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a second to just look at this Birds of Paradise out of the Banned Spirits deck. There are a lot of dorks in Robert's deck here, and I think that's a great way to actually get to cheat a bunch of extra three drops into your deck, which makes your collected companies more powerful as well. So we're looking at the four Noble Hierarch and the three Birds of Paradise. Mm -hmm. And we see extra copies of Geist of St. Traft in the list as well. So this is kind of a spot where normally Collected Company is already a great card in the matchup just because it effectively lets you get two cards out of one card, and it also lets you get out on the table. But the cards he's going to hit on average are going to be more powerful as a result of these threes. Yeah, well, it's right. So three Birds of Paradise is actually more than your stock Bant Spirits list plays. Exactly. Normally you just see... Four Noble Hierarchs, maybe a Birds of Paradise here or there, but it looks like that he's choosing to play them over Aether Vials in this list, which is an interesting take, but it makes your companies much better. Now, I do want to go over some exchange here. Robert played a turn two Selfless Spirit, and Reed kept pace. It was a copy of Abrupt Decay, so two creatures from Robert, two removal spells from Reed, and Reed now getting the spot where he wants to be... He Robert is a player who stumbles first. His turn three does not have a three, a third land. It's just Mausoleum Wanderer. And now it looks like Reed's going to take advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the upside and downside of these, these mana dorks, is you're going to see a lot more creatures. And black, black, green was a mana cost for Liliana. On Robert's side, I'm sure he was hoping it was Liliana of the Veil, but it was not. It's Liliana of the Last Hope, which on a board like this is a powerhouse. Right, and the big draw to even having Liliana Last Hope in your deck is sometimes she is just lights out for these small ball creature draws where you have all these X1s and she's just going to kind of machine gun them down one at a time. Yeah, I remember that even from Standard, you know, Liliana Last Hope, just a perfect answer to cards like Selfless Spirit. Yep, exactly. Selfless Spirit. All, all the things that we've seen this game are basically all of the cards that Lee needed to not see against this Last Hope. Well, we'll see what Lee has left over. Inquisition of Kozilek shows... Another Mausoleum Wanderer, Reflector Mage, Spell Queller, and Collected Company. I see Robert just, the only thing he could cast that turn was that Mausoleum Wanderer, but into a Liliana there wasn't even a point. Exactly. Kind of the hope here, for Lee at least, is that you draw another one-drop creature and kind of go, all right, one of these is going to die, but that means I get to untap with one of them. Spell Queller is gone. Fairly intuitive take. It's the only one that he could flash in on the end step to attack this Liliana. Dark Confidant out for Reed. With a land, Robert can use Reflector Mage on it. If not, though, Reed will start getting extra cards, and Robert's draw for the turn, a copy of Supreme Phantom. That's actually a pretty okay pickup here, just because Liliana isn't for sure going to wipe it out, and it can even protect the Mausoleum Wanderer from Liliana's later on. And we're just going to continue to develop here. We'll net at least one extra card off that Dark Confidant. What looks to be more. This is kind of getting rough for Robert because there's sort of a point of no return with these green-black decks where if you just hit enough cards, you'll be so far ahead with all kinds of one-for-ones and removal spells that even if you have these powerful cards, you're just not going to be able to catch back up. Yeah, I saw there. A pickup of Dark Confidant was Treetop Village. That's his fifth land. Draw for the turn was Scavenging Ooze, but it looks like Reed has other thoughts here. To the front of his hand, he's moved a copy of Liliana of the Veil, so two Lilianas could be in play. 
and that's going to be exactly it. A minus two, and Robert has to sacrifice that Supreme Phantom. No land, and he will then pick up the cards. Yeah, there's kind of a point where you're staring down two Planeswalkers and a Dark Confidant, who's almost a Planeswalker himself, and you don't get right. to play anything. Why would you keep playing? Yeah, it felt like with a land drop that turn, he could play to a fourth land and a great collected company, but missing it there, there's not really any coming back. Exactly. Robert's best draws there were things that could help him put Geist of St. Traft into play just because it's so good at shooting down Planeswalkers. Yeah, and I did want to mention that as we look at their sideboards. With Robert's build being so heavy on Geist of St. Traft with three copies in the main, this is a matchup where I expect that to be pretty reasonable. Yeah, so you can't use your typical removal spells. And also, choosing to have these Birds of Paradise over Aether Vials means that Robert's Geist is more insulated from Edict effects like Luliana of the Veil than we normally would expect. Right, yeah, Luliana is generally the way that Obzon would answer that kind of card. So, Or with a blocker. Right, right, right. So looking at the sideboards, both players, I mean, if you want to talk about how the effect that Krark Clan Ironworks is having on the metagame, <laughs> let's look at the beginning of their sideboards. Oh, uh, yes. The seven total copies of the same hate card. <laughs> yeah, seven stony silences in the sideboards. So not, neither player is going to use them for this matchup. Uh, Reed Duke also paying some mind to it. Some resurgence there of Amulet. Three copies of Fulminator Mage. Big fan of seeing that one there, and... He's even giving a nod to it in his main deck with Liliana Last Hope. I don't know if you got to bring back a Fulminator Mage with that minus in a matchup where it's good. Right. It's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that second it's the second Fulminator that I that is the one that's hard to beat out of those decks. Oh yeah, exactly. The first one you're just like, yeah, I mean I was planning on playing some lands anyway, but the second one, the third one, that's when you're kinda going, Wow, I'm I'm out of lands. Uh, this Tarmogoy is starting to hit me a lot. Exactly, exactly. Now Reed does have extra removal. Two collective brutality, two path to exile. He has two Nile Spellbomb, a Grapdigger's Cage, and I like this one sideboard copy of Choke. Um, maybe not for this matchup, but I do want to look toward the removal spells and perhaps the Grapdigger's Cage as to whether they would play here. I agree, and this is going to be sort of a play-draw dependent thing where I like the Collective Brutalities when Reed is on the play, but I don't like them as much when he's on the draw just because you don't really get a chance to tag one of the Mana Dorks when it would be relevant. You, the... the the best possible brutality is general discard, hit a dork, hit a collected company, go about your business. But in this case, Robert's going to get to play a three before Reed can cast brutality. But path and cage are two things that are actually pretty interesting here just because they shut off some of Robert's more powerful tools. Yeah. And on Robert's side, normally this is where I'd see a Bant Spirits player board into Geist of St. Traft. But for that, this situation, these are actually all in his main deck, which makes this sideboard a bit interesting. Yeah, so we're going to probably see Thalia, Guardian of Thraben here. You know, the nice thing about Thalia is even though it is not shutting Reed down, it is slowing him down, which is basically what Robert needs to happen, right? Your cards are not necessarily going to go long as well as all of Reed's Planeswalkers, so you just kind of need to close the door before Duke gets to build up, and Thalia is one of the pieces in that puzzle. So do you want it over something like Selfless Spirit, or what are you looking at cutting? So here are the things that I'm just not super happy with. I don't really like Phantasmal Image because you have to have another creature in play in order for it to be good. It dies to everything, obviously, but if you don't have two or three creatures in play you might just get got when you go to cast this image read kills the thing you were planning to copy and then all of a sudden your image doesn't have a creature to clone that ends up looking pretty embarrassing he might consider taking out a copy or two of these mana dorks in order to make his average top deck more powerful yeah and it's also possible he's just not as high on some of his creature removal since duke just has a couple of very important creatures that you need to answer, these Dark Confidant, the Scavenging Ooze. But otherwise, you can try to just fly around a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, the Birds of Paradise, it's interesting to talk about boarding that out because against Obzon, I do see the reason why you'd want to board them out. At the same time, we talked about how Geist of St. Trapped is one of the best things Robert can be doing. And so there's this push-pull with those cards where he really wants one of them on turn one and then would, wants to not draw a second one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You want to draw exactly one copy of them, and redundant copies are actively bad. All right. Getting ready for game two. Now, at StarCityGames.com, if you want to get the latest on modern and other strategy, we have our Star City Games, doc, Star City Games newsletter. This is Magic Gathering News. gives you highlights from the week's articles, lets you know when the SCG Tour is coming near you, finds invitational qualifiers and game nights, and also it's free. You can sign up today at StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. Big fan of the newsletter. It's like free articles every week. Robert has kept on seven. It's Reed now contemplating his first hand. 
Robert giving him the stare down. Love it. There you go. got to give credit to someone who, while Reed Duke is deciding a mulligan, you just right. stare into oh, his yeah. soul. I couldn't do it. You got to get him on, get him on I, tilt, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep. Do it. You won't. And one drop from Robert is Mausoleum Wanderer. You know Reed kept because he was intimidated. Yeah, it just didn't. <laughs> this guy's real confident. Just, just don't know if this hand's going to be good enough. I like the power plays. That's what I, that's what I play Magic for. Yeah. <laughs> Last game, Robert was never able to untap with a creature for the entirety of the game. We'll see if he can do one better this time. I'm confident that he can. This is kind of the start that you really want because it lets you protect your cards from Inquisition of Kozilek or just force the Fatal Push. So with a card like Thoughtseize, are you interested in countering? So a lot of times it depends on what the texture of your hand is looking like, but at the rate that Lee kept his hand, I'm under the impression that there's something like a collected company, a Geist of St. Traff, that Robert would rather have than this Mausoleum Wander. Yeah, and Robert agrees. Happy to trade that away. That's the kind of situation, if you're willing to trade your Wander with a Thoughtseize or an Inquisition, then you kind of expect this to play out nearly every game. Mm -hmm, exactly. And we do get a look at Robert's hand, and we see why he wanted to protect it from a thought seize. His hand is three more lands, a spell queller, and a collected company. Now, Inquisition from Reed can only take the spell queller, so Robert's left with three lands and a company. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Reed Duke has a copy of Collective Brutality hiding out in his hand just to mop up that co that company. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen one turn before earlier than Robert's going to be able to cast it. So what you're saying is, It'll right, work. On yep. right on time, right on time. Well, maybe. <gasps> Look at the pass from Reed. Now we see why Reed tanked so on that hand. He doesn't have a second land. Oh. And I think, you know, we can double check here in a second, but it looks like Robert picked up another copy of Collected Company. Well, we will. Reed did hit the second land here on turn three. So I think we're going to see that Collective Brutality. Reed's hoping that he, he'll leave his opponent without any plays. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the kind of thing where... You inquisition your opponent, and then you get this effective thought seize, and you're kind of just hoping, all right, please just brick. Brick right. like once. Brick one time. Come on now. Come on now. But unfortunately, we also know how hand destruction cards work. It's You can't no. thought seize the top of their deck. Here is Collective Brutality. And you're right. It's two copies of Collective Company. That was Robert's draw from the turn. And, and you got to think there's a, you know, kind of a sigh there for Reed, seeing that that was the pickup. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Now he's hoping that this company will miss. We have a game on our hands. Yeah. I would think from Robert's side that this company does need to hit something reasonable. I mean, Reed Duke kept a one land hand on the draw. It's probably not just because it has an Inquisition and a Thought Seize in it. Exactly. And this is the point where you're really hoping your collected company is going to set something up like Thalia, since we know Duke is choked on lands, Oof. and then a Geist of St. Traff to just slam the door shut. Robert going to pass. If you're trying to get to something like Thalia, did you want to main phase the company here? So here, it depends a lot on what Robert drew. But if you don't really mind, Reed, say, you, here on two, you're expecting these Abzan decks, or these green-black decks, at least from Robert's perspective, to kind of lead on one of their two-drop creatures. You don't really want to main phase it because you're opening it up to some removal and giving Duke information to operate yeah. with. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Reed played Dark Confidant. Yeah, I guess the, the other the other side is that Liliana would be possible if you had the if you hit Thalia, you're you're turning off Liliana's. So the trade side, the opposite side of that is if you hit Thalia in another card, you just kill Liliana. Okay, so and that's kind of like shutting you can it already off, answer but Liliana. Yeah. Sure, maybe <laughs> effectively gains a couple life because you take out a Planeswalker, but you just take one of his best cards away for free in that case. Looks like we have a pass here. Robert may be tanking with his Dark Confidant on the stack since Spellcaller oh, could if, eat it. If he wants to do it with it on the stack, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see Collected Company. There is a Spell Queller available. See if that's the card. Top six, Robert can choose two creatures to put them into play. It is Spell Queller and Thalia. That's how we do it. And, and yeah, how we do it. That's with the Dark Confidant on the stack. So now we'll see who does 
Well, no, I was going to say if he doesn't have anything, he doesn't. He can't have a fatal push Slaughter here. Slaughter Pact, I guess, is, yeah. is kind of what we're looking at. Accidental bump of the top card there. And it looks like they will play on. Supreme Phantom, the play from Robert, pumps both. Rather, pumps Spell Queller up to three. It's a swing for five and read down to 11. Board getting mighty cluttered here. This is a real clock. Yeah, now I, I was looking for something like Damnation. Sometimes we can see that in an obs on list, but I don't believe Reed has any sweepers today. No, Reed's just trying to play some Honest Magic, which the nice thing is that means all of your cards play throughout every phase of the game, but it is a little bit harder to come back from these situations where you're just really far behind. Well, looking at Reed's hand, he actually did have that fatal push last turn, so... Man, what a d what damage that Thalia, Thalia did. Thalia is nice. Yeah. Thalia is nice. I wouldn't say I'm a Thalia fan, but she's a powerful card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally they tend to mess with the decks I like playing. Yeah, exactly. I want to cast a lot of spells and that be good enough. Here Duke's just somewhat trying to figure out what pieces of the puzzle he needs to pull out first in order to get back into this game. Yeah, Reed does pass here, and during Robert's upkeep, he's going to fetch. So Revolt is online this turn, which feels like it's going to matter here. Yeah, you generally just want to be going for the Spell Queller because that gets you the Dark Confidant, which gets you more resources and so forth. Yeah, tap land from Reed, which means it's one spell this turn. Just that fatal push. That will be the play. Can target Spell Coiler where he gets back his Dark Confidant. Could we get a flavor judge on this? What how do you, you can how push? How do you push a spirit that flies? What happens? Fatally. You fatally you push, fatally a, push, push a spirit. It's, it's yeah. You kill it because it's a spirit. Ooh, and you bounce it because it's a bob. Yeah, Reflector Mage takes, puts Dark Confidant back into Reed's hand, and attack for three sends him to seven. This is big. Yeah, how, how do you push a ghost is the question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just it feels like either your so, arms go through it or it doesn't fall. Well, it doesn't lose flying, right? So it doesn't have to fall. It just has to, you have to poof it, right? It's you got to like poof you, it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of cleanup on Reed's side. Bright side, Duke does know that he gets another turn after this. There isn't, outside Man. of some collected company nonsense, he's not dying next turn. Yeah. Lee is actually kind of just doing a five color humans yeah. impression here. Robert's empty handed. Exactly. Reed will cast Scavenging Ooze, and that's actually a card, looking at this board, which could start to stabilize him. Uh, Robert's board is not, though it's three creatures, they're all playing very honest. That's true, but one thing to look at here, and this is kind of why the Banned Spirits deck is so attractive to so many creature players, Robert is this far ahead against Abzan, and has only cast three spells this game. Yeah. Robert has actually not done very much, and is still kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Three mana, Drog Skull Captain. Not the draw Reed was hoping to see. An attack in for two sends him down to five. Nothing but respect for my captain. <laughs> it is. Scavenging goes up to a 3 3. Reed gains a life, goes up to six. This is where it starts. Yeah, we're, I mean, I think there's some pressure on him to have a removal spell for this Drog Skull Captain. It looks like he has something. Yeah, well, he has, I, I want to say, six cards in hand. So he's got a lot of somethings, <laughs> right? The question is if he can cast them. Thalia's just doing a number here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a point where even if you attack with both Captain and Wanderer last turn, Reed can, or next turn, Reed can just gain two life. Right. Like, that's not a very good turn from the Banned Spirit stack. Robert still kind of needs to draw some things here in order to get back in and seal the deal. Duke has already gone through two copies of Fatal Push. 
playing the full all, the full four. Which we'll see, I guess, in uh, Jund builds, you don't always see four Fatal Pushes because of Lightning Bolts. Though exactly. in Golgarian Obzon, this is pretty normal. Yeah, Bolt's just so good at turning the corner. But here, you still just need that those ways to kill creatures in the first turn or two, and push is the best option. Other things are, what, disfigure? Ulcerate? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Dismember? I don't know if you've dismembered a Goblin Guide, but it feels worse than it sounds. Yeah, it hey, that sounds, sounds horrible. Bad. Especially if I was on the draw, so it already took already took two. At that point, I just don't. An None of these are good options. <laughs> I don't really like dismembering the burn match. You know what? Maybe Reed is onto something with these fatal pushes. He's gonna fetch down to six, five here from six, and we have an escalated collective brutality. Minus two, minus two to the Thalia, and I actually imagine he's gaining two life here big fan of this line just because Reed understands he's up a million cards <gasps> and this is the worst top deck for oh. him this is the card he didn't want to see I, I mentioned there you know that he needed to kill remove drug skull captain but it's a second drug skull captain off the top from Robert and Richard Reed does not have any sweepers and, and I think you see him moving fast that, here because he knows, he knows. that this that, that, that he's done it. yeah it's time to pack him up yeah and that's exactly what he does we're on to a third game a huge captain from Robert Lee it's, it's all in the death stare. Pre-game death stares yeah. make these things happen. Oof. <laughs> you just <laughs> got you to put that fear. I'm, I'm the kind of, I go runner, runner, drug skull captain. You just got to know. Oh, that's yeah. about, that's, that's happening. Oh, yeah. You, that's the thing where you got to tell your opponent, yeah, that's how this matchup usually goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is normal for me. Have uh, you not you, been you, here you before? Say, yeah, I mean, there's that. There's the, 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 the draw of company earlier in the game. Oh, yeah. That was big. Oh, yeah. Ro Robert, he, just, on one hand, it's one. Th it's pretty easy to go, wow, he got lucky that game, but he also drew a lot of lands. Right. Right? So, sure, he got lucky, but he had to get unlucky in order to need to get lucky. So how lucky did he I, really get? I'll take getting lucky against Reed Duke. That's, oh, that seems fine. I take getting lucky wherever I can get lucky. <laughs> you don't get to choose these things. No. I like to just collect a company into both Drog Skull Captains. Ooh. Ooh, that's where... At the where, same time. Ooh, that is, uh, we call that the wombo combo. Yeah, just, oh, by the way, all my creatures are unkillable for the rest of the game. Oh. And did, they're they're bigger. Did you did you put removal spells in your... <laughs> oh, God, this is so awkward. Well, one of us is uh -huh. going to have to change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Judge, these, these deck lists are locked in? Locked in, oh, oh man. Oh, wow. Oh. This is so... This must be rough for you. I don't... Oh, jeez. Sorry for your loss, but I had to make it happen, you know? I had to yeah. do it to him. Looking at the Reed's board, it's not like he has a I don't think has a way to get around two drug skull captains. Yeah, and that last game was a lot of the reason that you might be considering just bringing in this single graph yeah. diggers cage where if that card is almost like thought sees all of your opponent's collected companies. Yeah. If Reed is ahead or close to ahead on the board, he does have the full four copies of Liliana of the Veil. Vale, so that can answer hexproofing creatures. Right. The issue is that that's kind of assuming a little bit in that Lee, if Lee has anything else, yes. especially any other spirit, because all of Lee's other spirits in that case would also have hexproof. Right. He the, the, the captains would be the last thing he would sacrifice. Exactly. There are, in a lot of matchups in modern, there are these kind of nightmare scenarios where if if the deck gets to do this thing, it is won. The game might not be over, but the game is over, and we're just kind of going through the motions at this point. Um, Bant Spirit's getting two copies of Drog Skull Captain out against a fair deck when it's at, you know, more than five life or something where it can get punked out. Probably going to win those games. 99 Point nine percent of the time, it's just read on read Duke to kind of avoid those choke points. We did see those three sideboard Thalias looking at their players' boards come into play there for Robert. The tempo it gave him so relevant in that game. It was the turn he had a accompanied into Thalia and Spell Queller, so they both show up at the same time. Was able to quell the Dark Confidence, and Reed had a land fatal push-up, was never able to use that. Yeah, it basically let Robert build a four-mana time walk there because he ate Reed's spell and then turned off his next one and got an attack in. It's just real powerful. 
Game three here. Reed Duke on the play for the first time. Starts on a copy of Shambling Vent. For his white mana here in the deck, two copies of Shambling Vent, one of each of the shock lands of Temple Garden and Godless Shrine. That's going to be it for actual white producing lands. Now he has plenty of fetch lands to go find them. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy for him to just, he only ever needs a single white source. So even if he gets knocked off them by something, none of the matchups that are blowing up lands are the ones that he need, needs white for. Maybe he wants Lingering Souls against some of the Field of Ruin blue-white decks, but for the most part, it's there for Stony Silence. And no one drop from Bant is a bit strange to see with so many of them in Robert's deck. You have to think he's kept something pretty powerful. Yeah, but this is the kind of instance where we're expecting, you know, multiple collected companies, maybe... If you have Thalia Geist Company, you can't throw that back. You're not happy right. about it, but you can't throw it back. And we'll see if that's going to be able to keep pace. Reed does have a turn two Dark Confidant. I think a card that, like on the draw against a one-drop start is not strong enough here, but on this board looks very good. Dark Confidant on an empty board, is that's got to be one of the hallmark plays of Modern, right? Where you know stuff is either going wrong, but you know something big is happening whenever you just go, oh, huh. Yeah, Bob is the biggest thing on the table, and also what? Yeah, now? this kind of reminds me you know, of Magic about five years ago. This was just the best thing you could be doing. It's still a good thing you can be doing. <laughs> um. Wasn't Primeval Titan legal five years ago? There's oh, no yeah. way you thought this was the best thing you could be doing. I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, it's not that me thinking it's the best thing you'd be doing and it's the thing I choose to do are very different statements. Well, what is best, anyway? <laughs> All right. Are we here? Is this real? Five enough? years ago, Seething Song was a thing you could be doing, too. Which, which that was something I was pretty into. Path to Exile from Robert. Actually going to take care of the Dark Confidant before the untap. Now, I'm, I'm a bit surprised to see that in the deck for this matchup. Though, on this board, it's exactly what I'd want. Yeah, and Robert likely is just kind of thinking there he needs to be able to answer these Dark Confidants permanently. Otherwise, he's just not going to be able to keep up in terms of cards. He doesn't really have any other sources of removal spells. So, you know, maybe he's not boarding all of them out or something to that effect, but he's not very excited to draw multiple copies. Okay. But the first one is fine. Does ramp read once. We'll see Inquisition of Kozlek and see what Robert's hand is looking like. And we see two more copies of Path to Exile. So for a full three, then we see Geist of St. Trapped, Spell Queller, and Company. Showing kind of what you mentioned as to why you would keep a hand that's this slow. It's a bit heavy on Path to Exile. I can't imagine the third one plays very often in this matchup. Yeah, those were likely just some of the draws that he picked up here because the rest of the cards are the reason you keep the hand. The Company, the Queller, the Geist, and the Three Lands. I imagine the keep was those paths, and he's just drawn a couple paths sure. since, since keeping. Um, but the nice thing about this hand is, one, Inquisition cannot take Collected Company. Right. And then it also can't take away Robert's third turn. So if... I'd be surprised if Reed had a Liliana of the Veil and didn't play it there. Yeah, now he still could have a land drop and have Liliana. Remember, that's that was a... that ex, He has an extra land from oh, Path to right, Exile. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Takes the Geist of St. Trapped. That, that makes sense. Yeah, if it's land... Liliana here would be great. It's not. It's Tarmogoyf and no land drop. So a significantly worse here, especially against a hand of all path to exiles. These are just lining up in a way that they're, you know, this is going to get pathed. Yeah, Inquisition of Kozilek and Tarmogoyf. Can you name a more iconic duo? Oh. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> all jokes aside, this, this hand is actually pretty great for Robert, at least in the, the direction that it's going. We know that Reed's list is pretty light on Haymakers, so Robert just doesn't have to tap out on his turn for a long time, and Reed has to somehow navigate through a Spell Queller and then a Collected Company on the following turn. You know, that basic Plains does Robert, and his path away the Tarmogoyf. Basic land count for Reed is four, two forests, two swamps, no problem here. Looks like that basic land count's about to be two yeah. in play, two in the deck. So this is an interesting thing. I remember when Golgari mid-range first started seeing play here in Modern. It was kind of this Assassin's Trophy, Path to Exile, uh, Field of Ruin style deck. It was really big on making your opponent find basics. Reed actually is pretty much off that. We have one copy of Assassin's Trophy and zero copies of Field of Ruin in the deck. Yeah, so there's kind of a point where you need the game to go long 
for those advantages to come online. So when we see things like Arclight Phoenix, like KCI or the Ironworks deck taking over, what do you do? Field of Ruin and then they untap and kill you? Field of Ruin, the thing in the ice deck? It's, it's yeah. just not realistic. Well, I think it's interesting because we have a couple players here on the tour who really like that play style. You know, I expect to see this out of a Reed Duke Golgari deck. Uh, we see a lot of Saul Malka playing straight black green, and that's more of the Field of Ruin style black mm -hmm. green. Yeah, and that's one where Sol Malka is going to play how Sol Malka wants to play. He's he's great. I want to yeah. be very clear, this is not me trying to insult him, but he plays the deck very specifically. He's played it for a very long time, and he knows what he wants out of his black-green deck. English Nikozlek went under Spell Queller that turn. Mike picking up the land that he needed. And Reed's follow-up was Dark Confidant. This is yeah, did Robert pick up the land? He did, he did like pick up the land for company. company. Yeah, that was that was kind of Reed's hope here, is that maybe Robert draws a couple of his mopier yeah. cards in the next couple of turns so he doesn't have that queller in the company draw. And this triple pass to exile draw just keeps being rewarding. I think Robert's right now debating between company and path this turn. You know, he can cast company, but it will give Reed a card, whether he's, he's willing to do that. I'm kind of at the point here where I almost just want to start applying pressure and think the comp there's merit to this company. When you have four lands in a collected company, it's hard to make a different play. Exactly, and the other cards in Robert's hand look to be Path to Exile, Reflector Mage, and you don't really want to be casting just one of those when you have four mana. You want to make yeah. good use of all your lands each turn. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, all the plays are pretty good here. You know, oh. any each of them is one that on an, if it was the only play, I wouldn't be disappointed. Oh, exactly. This is definitely sort of the... Uh, the embarrassment of riches where you know what it is that you want to do. You want to do something that deals with a stark confidant or circumvents it. And both of those are pretty good options to have instead of doing, you know, nothing instead. Wow. Fetch and shock here for Lee. That seems like it's going to be a collected company. And that is the decision he makes. Just too good to pass up. And now we'll see what creatures it brings. Hope here likely being just to hit a Reflector Mage. Two ca or two Captains. I'd take two Captains. Would you? Yeah. Um, you know, no. it's not the Mage, but... And this is pretty darn close. Drog Skull Captain and Supreme Phantom. I'm glad so, that you'll make that a sacrifice for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he swings in for four with Spell Queller. Now with a Hexproof Spell Queller. And Reed down to 13. He needs some help quickly. You can tell by the way that Reed keeps flipping lands with these. They, they have a good working yeah. relationship. Oof. Is that a kitchen fink? No, he, he, <laughs> that wouldn't even solve it. That buy him not, I don't even, not even sure that would buy him a turn. Oh, no, I'm just saying you said oof. Oof. It's a kitchen fink. Oh, wow. There we go. I'll do that. <laughs> Make puns so bad. Your coworkers miss oh. them. A swing of dark confidant. Robert going to block with the two four Supreme Phantom. Reed puts the confidant away. Interesting. Actually, just one was that that was more of a liability. Is that the thought? Didn't have oh, a he didn't have revolt. revolt. And now, what? A, <laughs> takes care of draw skull Ooh. captain for that revolt. And now to Tarmogoyfs. That block cost Robert a bit there. Yeah, maybe you should have just gotten to 13 as kind of the other thought. <laughs> yeah, this swing now only for four, read to nine. The race is suddenly on Reed's side as the Tarmogoyfs are four fives. Now, Robert is going to Reflector Mage one Goyf, and as we both players know, has another Path to Exile in his hand. How do you feel about Reflector Mage and Path versus two creatures they can target? This triple path to exile draw on Robert's side, I did not expect to be as good as it ended up being. Yeah, sometimes the other uh, the other deck just has the creature draw, and your you know swords to plowshares are great. Now Reed with some counterplay. Here's one of his two copies of Lingering Souls. And this is going to do exactly what we were talking about before. Yeah, it's just going to buy time. This is time. great. Get our first Jadeen tokens. Big Jadeen fan. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm glad that they're getting their first play out of a out of a Tarmogoyf deck. It's, this is just as God intended. This is, <laughs> this is exactly 
it, you know, I wonder if she thought about this. So maybe that was part of the <laughs> part of the decision. What are what are the tokens we're gonna see out of the out of the Tormagoyf Inquisition decks? Noble hierarch from Robert. Reflection range attacks. It exalts to a three four. Now Robert actually could have attacked with spell queller here. So basically, you just don't really want to have it ever anything go wrong, and this is the safest line. Okay. And it, this is also likely a play where Robert wants to. You know, we probably aren't going to see this from Reed. But you just want to give Reed a chance to screw up. And if Reed triple blocks, all of a sudden both of the flyers can attack. Yeah. Or quadruple blocks, excuse me. Robert plays out the rest of the hand. It's a path to exile on the Tarmogoyf. Now he is out of paths. And then the last card, Athalia, Guardian of Thraben. That was a powerhouse last game. They'll read on six lands right now. How do you feel about Thalia when you have cast three Path to Exiles? <laughs> well, that's why you cast all the paths first. Oh, And then you right, cast the right, Thalia, right. you know? Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. It's perfectly executed. Reed is a couple of creature lands hiding out back there. Yeah. One of them gains life. Yeah, he casts Tarmogoyf, and you're right, he has Shambling Vent un untapped, does not have the white mana to activate it just yet, and then has a Treetop Village for the turn. Is this all of Reed's not black or not white sources? It's got to be all four it. basics. Uh, there's some blooming marshes that could be hanging out, or by that I mean a second blooming marsh. Swing in the air with spell queller is a four five. Going to get chump blocked by a spirit token, and here's Mausoleum Wanderer. Back to Reed Duke we go. All right, so if we draw another Mausoleum Wanderer with this Thalia, we can probably counter a spell. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> then again, it has to be a spell that we want to counter. You know, nothing, none of this Inquisition or anything. You don't want to counter Inquisition? I guess he did do it last game. I want to counter Inquisition. That card's good. Yeah, that's Can't it is a good card. Can't let him resolve it. put those in his deck for a reason. Redo. Both players now playing off the top. At this point, Reed is just kind of trying to figure out what the games he win he win look like. Like how do I actually get from where I am right now to the game where I'm able to claw back into this and how do I use the cards I have available to do it? And he's gonna go for some damage here it looks like. Treetop Village is activated. It and Tarmogoyf will attack. So we have a three three trample and a four five. There aren't any clean blocks for Robert. If he wants to trade block he'd have to trade. The idea here is sometimes when you're just real far behind on resources and you know you're not going to outgrind your opponent, it becomes your job to try to end the game. Right. By kill, obviously by killing the opponent. Naturally, you could concede, but that's probably bad for you. Most <laughs> right. Most of the time. <laughs> that's ways to end the game. That one is usually not a winning line. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not good. But uh, in this particular instance, Reed's just going, "All right, I'm down. You know, five spells or something to that effect. I have to find a way to navigate this to me winning." And sending in seven damage here is probably the first step to that. Well, this is an attack for seven, and it's big enough that Robert, he's going to have to block. Right now, he dealt four damage last turn in the air. Trading fours for sevens isn't going to work out. Now, he has some chump blockers to work with, maybe some trades to work with. Yeah, here we're probably going to be looking at something to the effect of double blocking the treetop village. You could even maybe look into getting real saucy and sending, say, Reflector Mage, Thalia, and Mausoleum Wanderer in front of the Tarmogoyf. But this is a complex, this is a very complex combat step. Yeah, I like the double block on treetop village. That's the line I'm looking at as well here, but using Thalia and Reflector Mage. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the flyers. Not yet. And it looks like He's going to go another line. This is actually a pretty good one, too. It was Noble Hierarch in front of Tarmogoyf and taking three to go to eight. I think this one's fine. We don't need the Spell Queller to be a four or five in order to get through anymore now that there are only three Lingering Souls tokens. Right. Just being a three, four instead is going to be good enough. Both players now with a card in hand. Reed did not play his card last turn. And the reason that we don't see Robert taking what to us looks like a free double block is if Reed has a fatal push or an abrupt decay or something. It's to that a big effect. deal. Yeah, yeah, he could just get destroyed. 
Robert could get destroyed, that is. And big draw oh. from Robert is Reflector Mage. He will reflect the Tarmogoy back to Reed's hand. Any thought, hope Reed had of racing here feels like it's off the table. Yeah, this is, this is really, really rough. Reed is down, yeah. what, 10 power on the board or something to that effect? And it just opens up a window for Robert to make a very aggressive swing here. Exactly. The, the worst that happens, so theoretically, Robert could attack with everything and... A fatal Reed push has, on Supreme Phantom would be pretty bad. That'd be really strong. We'd have to see... Yeah. Looks like Robert's going to swing all the flyers. I wouldn't even mind him throwing Reflector Mage in with this. I think throwing in a Reflector Mage is great here. It's almost a free attack, and you have one on the back anyway. Yeah, he's going to hold just the fl all the ground creatures and swing the flyers. Looks like he wants to make sure he has enough back to block that treetop village or shambling vent if Reed plays a white mana source. Mm -hmm. And here, I guess, the thought is if Duke has a removal spell, Reed could, Reed could go to, say, two. And right. Robert doesn't know Reed doesn't have a basic planes. And if he just gets a basic planes out of his deck, he can send Shambling Vent Treetop Village and the three tokens for eight. Well, it was Fatal Push. Reed actually takes care, though, of Spell Queller. And now he triple blocks the Supreme Phantom. Takes two off the Wanderer. That's that a, that bad. was great for Reed. And he goes to to four. This is where I think I wanted to see maybe even an, a full swing from Robert. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Seeing that extra almost free damage from Reflector Mage where getting in with the Treetop Village is kind of a death wish. Yeah, Liliana the Veil the draw for Reed. He is at four. Play minus two means Robert sacrifices a creature. He'll choose Thalia. Reed is making progress, but he's not out of the, the woods just yet. No, but this is this is starting to look good for Reed. Right, that treetop village can block both reflector mages. Exactly, and the tokens block Mausoleum Wanderer. Now Robert, his draw turn was Spell Queller, and so I think he has to decide what exactly he wants to do with it. It's, the action's going to be forced anyway due to Liliana, so I think using it as a combat trick for that Wanderer might be his best line. I completely agree with you. I really like the attack with the Mausoleum Wanderer at the Liliana because then it forces Reed to attack with one, or block with at least one of these tokens or lose the Liliana. And I, you're either getting a Liliana out of this or one spirit or two spirits, and those are all pretty good outcomes when you're not under lethal pressure on the way back. Now, you said to, to swing at Liliana here. You'd like that more than going upstairs? I would. So the biggest reason is that's the thing. Getting one point, the difference between three and four when all of your creatures have even powers is not yeah. a huge deal. Well, if you swing and there's no block, you could pump it to a 2-2. Two -two. That's true. That is true. It's just fairly unlikely that Reed doesn't block at all. Right. So it kind of comes down to, would you rather pave the way for your other cards to be better and not ever get blocked by these Lingering Souls tokens? Or maybe you want to make sure that this Liliana isn't and turning off your flash cards going forward. I think Robert's contemplating a full swing, which I actually don't hate. It's effectively sacrificing a Reflector Mage for two damage. Sends a Mausoleum Wanderer upstairs. Reed's going to go for the double block. Robert's going to trick in to play the Spell Queller, so the Wanderer will trade with the last remaining Spirit Tokens. And that's going to be the turn Robert passes. Do what you got to do. Back to Reed we go. His hand is Tarmogoyf. He's going to draw. Likely wants to play out the hand before using Liliana. Step one. Looking at activating Treetop Village. That will, seems likely to trade with a Reflector Mage. It's hard to say. There's, Ooh. Lee may just want to keep that Reflector Mage. And, it, and try to just win next just turn. Kill him. Treetop Village would have to hit three times to win here. And we see here that Lee has given, either drawn all of his removal or respects the creatures in the deck. So Collected Company, Reflector Mage, any of those cards, another Path to Exile are going to get this Tarmogoyf out of the way. So having an extra body going at Duke is going to be worth something against that, even against a Tarmogoyf. There's the Treetop Village swing. We'll see whether Lee 
wants to take the block or the, th or the damage. He's figuring that out himself. Three, two threes in play. If two of them can connect, that's the remaining four points. Reed timing this. I like how starting with this attack is giving Robert the least amount of information to make this call. And he goes for the double block. So a Reflector Mage will trade with Treetop Village. Follow up for Reed is Tarmogoyf. And a land and a plus what we call Miliana. A white source is what we call that, that exactly. You're gonna say it's not actually terrible here. Now, it's probably a white source on the next turn. For Reed to use Shambling Vent this turn, he has to fetch shock to one, which is might be a bit much. Exactly. And there's even a point where if Robert can't actually kill Reed this turn, he may have to change gears a little bit and go after this Liliana instead, because it's going to eat one of Robert's creatures if he doesn't kill it. Yeah, it's feeling like Robert may end up just a little short here. This has been a great game. Re let's rewind five turns. Yeah. We, we didn't understand how Reed could possibly win. I want to go back to that last turn where Robert had the option to throw away a Reflector Mage for two damage. He just got Reed to two. But wait, here's a card that could help out Robert. His oh, draw for the turn was his one of I... Moreland Haunt. Oh. This is a card that Obzon has a tough time dealing with. We're going to see Jadine's everywhere. <laughs> On both players. <laughs> <laughs> Reed fetches to one. But he's going to start getting those life points back. Now, because he's at one, he has to attack with Shambling Vent this turn. Exactly. He can't not attack. And in this case, probably going to have to see him sacrifice well, that Liliana to just get a body off the table. Well, Emma, hold on. If Reed just went to one, if he doesn't draw a card, he's actually just dead on board here, right? Exactly. Exactly. This makes a 1-1. One, one. That's the third power in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He needs to be able to find something that just gets everything out of the way. There may be a... And here's a swing confirm. We believe Reed's at one after using that fetch land. We'll confirm that because that's a very relevant oh, number. Oh, you know and what he is, is. You know what is different? One and two. Those are not the same. Yeah, just worlds apart. I've had, I've had fingers to help me figure that one out. Two of them, sometimes one of them. Swing from Reed is for six. It's not lethal. Reflector Mage in front of Shambling Vent. Reed hoping to maybe get an incorrect block, but Robert's not going to do that for him. And leaves it there. He already made the spirit token. Yeah, I do not love the sorcery speed spirit token, if, but for the yeah. most part, if Reed did sorcery speed removal, it would be pointed at the Queller anyway. Yeah, I don't think it actually matters. Right, so now minus two, and Reed, Robert sacrifices the Reflector Mage. Reed says go. Here's at three. Oh. Three in the air. Robert going to turn him sideways. Mouse Liam Wanderer first there to protect from a spell and a swing. And Reed extends the hand. It is Robert Lee picking up the win here in three. 